podcast series um wishing all the muslim viewers um eid mubarak and salamat hari raya idul fitri today we are going to discuss an important concept in public health known as disease prevention uh, we have heard the famous phrase prevention is better than cure and we look at activities to prevent a disease rather than curing a disease when we talk about it in public health so let's look at first what is the meaning of disease prevention so when we consider disease we consider it as um, maybe an event which is not warranted for or a condition which seems to be abnormal or pathological in nature so when we talk about disease prevention we talk about all anticipatory action taken to reduce the possibility of this disease or the adverse event from occurring and if at all the disease occurs we try to minimize the damage or the disability caused from that disease so we need to remember that action which is aimed at reducing the possibility of the event occurring or if at all the event occurs minimizing the damage or disability caused by the event is what we call as disease prevention to understand the levels of disease prevention better we will first start with understanding what is the natural history of disease when we try to learn about natural history of disease we may have to recall back what is the epidemiological trend and what changes occur at a cellular or molecular level when a disease occurs so let's look at what is natural history of disease um so if we consider health and disease as two ends of the spectrum by considering a dividing line between them we can consider health as a disease in its pre pathogenesis phase and the disease itself as the pathogenesis phase so what's happening in the pre pathogenesis phase is basically the dynamic interaction between the agent host and environment so changes in either of them or more than one of them is going to result in changes which are going to cause the disease so when we talk about interactions between the agent host and environment what happens is basically early changes and the response of our immune system which is going to result in the disease so when we consider a disease also we have an important concept known as a clinical horizon clinical horizon is a line above which all the changes which have occurred at the cellular level are going to show up physically so how does it show up so it may start with a prodrome so with a feeling of sickness or illness which may then proceed into frank illness when i say frank illness it means showing up of symptoms and signs of the particular disease this then can result in two sequelae either it can result in severe illness or the the worst part would be resulting in death now it the frank illness can also come back to and the severe illness can also come back to what we call as recovery so this in a nutshell is what we call as natural history of disease now when we talk about levels of prevention we are going to look at where each level is going to come into picture as i said earlier when we talk of prevention we talk of action resulting in maintaining health of the disease so when we talk about public health we are aiming at looking at maintenance of health and prevention of disease however if a person is diseased we do not leave that person we try to minimize the damage in that particular person so if we have to look at this natural history of disease with reference to levels of prevention we look at in the next picture so this is the natural history of disease we, which we just now discussed basically there are three levels of prevention please do remember three levels of prevention primary secondary and tertiary now in the natural history of disease where do each one of these appear let's look at that so primary prevention is basically reflecting all activities aimed at maintaining the health in the pre pathogenesis phase of the disease secondary prevention comes in when early changes have started to occur but the disease is still asymptomatic and tertiary prevention 
comes later part in the disease spectrum when the disease is severe enough or the person is recovering or has shown some complications of the disease. Now the points to remember are under each level of prevention we have got strategies or what we call as modes of intervention which specify the particular level and these are quite important uh, for us to understand. So under primary prevention what we do is we do health promotion and specific protection. I'm going to come to examples of each of them in the next slide. In secondary prevention we talk about early diagnosis followed by adequate, appropriate and prompt treatment. Diagnosing a disease in an asymptomatic phase is what we consider under screening. So when we try to detect undiagnosed or undetected disease, we consider it as a part of screening. Following screening, we subject people to diagnostic procedures after which they can be confirmed as either suffering from the disease or not suffering from the disease. Those who suffer from the disease have to be given early treatment in order to prevent complications. For those people who, in whom complications have already occurred, we have to apply the tertiary level of prevention under which we have the mode of intervention known as disability limitation and rehabilitation. So we try to minimize or limit the disability or the defect caused by the disease as much as possible and we try to rehabilitate the individual back to normal. So these are the three levels of prevention with the modes of intervention under each of them. Now talking specifically about primary level of prevention, we have health promotion and specific protection as the modes of intervention under it. So examples of health promotion and specific protection are seen in this slide. Let's first look at um, what consists of health promotion. So under health promotion, we have health education. So displaying posters, pamphlets about educating people about, for example, how to prevent dengue becomes a part of health promotion. Sometimes people um, use these words promotion and education interchangeably but we need to understand that health promotion is a larger concept and it has got embedded un in it several other things one of which is health education. So giving a talk about um, how to wash hands and maintain health hygiene of the hands is nothing but health education. And this forms a part of promoting health. So by washing hands carefully and in a proper manner, we promote our own health by preventing ourselves from diseases which are spread through uh, contaminated hands. So that becomes health education. Environmental modification is also an example of health promotion. By modifying our environment, by removing garbage, from nearby our houses by removing sources of water contamination or water stagnation we try to modify our environment so that pests or breeding of mosquitoes or other insects is prevented and in a larger way diseases which are spread through that like dengue malaria chikungunya are also prevented and by not getting those diseases we promote our own health nutritional interventions so by providing nutrition to children by providing appropriate nutrition to children what we can do is we can promote the health of the children so if their growth is good enough and their development is adequate they are going to be protected against diseases like the childhood diseases then lifestyle and behavioral changes now this important aspect is especially significant for prevention of non-communicable diseases. So if we maintain a good lifestyle which, which consists of a balanced diet, um, appropriate physical activity and giving off habits like smoking or alcoholism can result in promoting our own health. So under health promotion what we have seen is four things, health education, environmental modification, 
nutritional intervention and lifestyle and behavioral changes as examples which can help in promoting health. Now, these can either be individual in nature depending on the conditions against which we are promoting health or they can be a combination which can help people promote their health. The second intervention under primary prevention talks about specific protection. As the word signify, we are trying to protect the individual specifically against a particular disease or a particular event. So the examples of specific protection, the best one is immunization. So immunizing children against vaccine preventable diseases is a best example of specific protection. By immunizing the children against with a particular vaccine is going to prevent the disease from occurring in those children. So in other words, we are trying to protect those children against the specific disease by immunizing the child. Use of specific nutrients is another example of specific protection. So supplementation with vitamin A solution is going to protect the child against the very common condition known as night blindness. So if vitamin A solution is provided to children in the recommended doses, it's likely that it will protect these children from suffering from signs and symptoms of vitamin A deficiency. Another example of specific protection is control of environmental hazards like air pollution. So if we try to monitor the levels of noxious gases in the atmosphere and try to minimize the levels, we can control them and we can specifically protect people against hazards of air pollution. So these are examples of strategies or modes of intervention under primary prevention. Now we can also look at the bigger picture of these levels of prevention in terms of looking at the levels in management of high blood pressure. So we all know that hypertension is a very common condition these days and it's the most common non-communicable disease affecting people. So if we have to bring down these cases of high blood pressure, we can put in the levels of prevention, primary, secondary, tertiary in place and this may come in combination or may have to be used specifically for the individual depending on the condition. So if we want to consider primary prevention for high blood pressure, we talk about dietary education and exercise. In other words, we talk about health promotion. For secondary prevention, we talk about management of the elevated blood pressure by providing medications. So all the medicines which are available for control of blood pressure, if they are given in the recommended doses and taken regularly, can result in control of blood pressure. The point to remember here is, high blood pressure is a condition which can be controlled but cannot be cured. So, the person who suffers from this condition has to take care that the level of blood pressure is maintained to the level which is recommended by the treating physician. If not, this can result in certain complications. We can also prevent complications by putting in primary and secondary levels of prevention. However, for a person in whom the complications of high blood pressure have already developed, it can, we can still go for tertiary level of prevention by trying to limit the defect or the disability caused by high blood pressure. Now, the commonest complications occurring by, because of high blood pressure are stroke. So, this stroke can, the disability caused by stroke can be limited by detecting this, the stroke patient as early as we can and trying to treat for it. So, we can give anticoagulants and physiotherapy in order to limit the disability caused as a sequel of high blood pressure. So, here we can see the levels of prevention being applied to a condition that is high blood pressure. We can talk of several other conditions in which we can apply the three levels of prevention. Now, let's look at the bigger picture. Um, if we consider three aspects, the strategy itself, that means the primary, secondary or tertiary level of prevention. We look at 
in whom we apply it. So what is the level of disease status when we look at the application of the level of prevention? And finally, what is going, what is going to be the bigger effect of it? How do we look at it? So let's start with primary level of prevention. So if we have our primary level of prevention, we are going to apply it to those who are susceptible. Susceptibles are the ones who do not suffer from the disease or do not show any signs or symptoms of the disease but are likely to have the disease. By applying primary level of prevention in this group of individuals, the bigger effect which we have is we try to achieve a reduced disease incidence. So no new cases of the disease will occur if we apply primary level of prevention. Now, how do I give an example of uh, this? So for example, if people in a particular community are educated against, educated about the beneficial effects of sleeping in insecticide treated bed nets, wearing um, long protective clothing, uh, keeping their environment clean so that there are no, there is no pooling of water where the larvae of the Aedes aegypti mosquito are going to breed. What eventually it will result in is reduction in the incidence of dengue in that particular area. So this is an example of primary prevention. Now wherein all people in the community are susceptible. So a child, an adult, an old individual, all in the community are susceptible. But by applying this level of prevention through health promotion and specific protection, we can reduce the incidence of dengue. So this is the strategy. This is the status of the disease and that this is the larger effect. If we look at secondary level of prevention, we are aiming at the asymptomatic individuals. When we say asymptomatic, these are the individuals in whom the disease process may have already started. Okay, so by applying secondary level of prevention, we can reduce the prevalence of the disease or the complications or consequences of the disease. So what an example of secondary prevention would be, if I know that my parents are diabetic, I would like to go and get myself screened for diabetes and get earlier diagnosed for diabetes and get treated. So in this way, there will be reduced prevalence of diabetes in the community if so many people who are asymptomatic go and get themselves screened and treated for diabetes and in as a consequence of this if people follow adequate treatment and the preventive measures the complications of diabetes would definitely be cut down now the last level would be the tertiary level of prevention and this is applied to all those who are symptomatic because as we saw earlier, tertiary level of prevention is applied when the consequences or complications of the disease have already occurred. But our aim of applying tertiary level of prevention is to reduce complications or the disability caused because of the condition or the disease in question. So this is all about the three levels of prevention in a nature. Thank you very much for watching. Please do subscribe and comment. All the best. Bye.